Off the coast of Bali, a colossal $3.09 billion project is underway to build an entire international airport on the open sea. Engineers are creating a 900-hectare island from scratch, stretching 1.5 kilometers into the ocean. On this newly forged land, they will construct two massive 3,600-meter runways, long enough for the world's largest superjumbo jets. This isn't just an airport, it's the foundation for a brand new smart city, an aerotropolis, designed to handle 50 million passengers a year. But this megastructure is being built on a soft, unstable seabed in one of the most earthquake-prone regions on Earth. So how do you build an island that won't sink or get swallowed by the sea? This audacious plan wasn't born overnight. It's the result of a turbulent, decade-long journey to solve a critical problem. Bali, a paradise for millions, is at its breaking point. The island's only international gateway, Ngura Rai Airport in the south, is bursting at the seams. It handles around 24 million passengers annually, pushing the limits of its maximum capacity. Hemmed in by the city, there is simply no room to expand or add a much-needed second runway. This bottleneck has created a deep economic divide. The south thrives, but is choked with traffic and development, while the north, just a three- or four-hour drive away, remains largely disconnected, struggling with higher rates of poverty and unemployment. The idea for a northern airport first surfaced in 2013, with a plan to build it offshore in the Kubutambahan district announced in 2015. But for years, it was a dream on life support, plagued by delays and political uncertainty. In a major blow, the project was removed from Indonesia's list of national strategic projects in 2022, leading many to believe it was dead. Then, in a dramatic reversal, the plan was revived in late 2024 and given the official green light in 2025 by the new administration of President Prabowo Subianto. It was reinstated as a national priority, a symbol of a new vision for Bali to compete with global hubs like Singapore and Hong Kong. But building an airport is one thing. How do you build the very land it sits on, out in the open ocean? The first and most critical challenge lies deep beneath the waves. The seabed off the coast of North Bali isn't solid rock. It's made of deep layers of soft, waterlogged marine clay, a material with the consistency of thick, wet toothpaste. If you were to simply pile sand and rock on top of this, the immense weight would cause the ground to sink unevenly for decades, a process called subsidence. Japan's Kansai Airport, built on a similar seabed, sank over 11 meters, far more than engineers predicted, requiring constant, expensive repairs. To avoid this fate, engineers must first strengthen the seabed itself. The process begins with extensive surveys, drilling deep into the seafloor to map the exact thickness and composition of these soft clay layers. Once they know what they're dealing with, the real work begins. The primary technique is to squeeze the water out of the clay, like squeezing a wet sponge. To do this, they will install millions of special drains, called prefabricated vertical drains, deep into the clay. These act like millions of tiny straws. Then, they pile a huge amount of sand on top, a process called surcharging. The weight of the sand presses down on the clay, forcing the trapped water up through the drains. Over many months, this process compacts the clay, making it much stronger and more stable creating a solid foundation to build upon. With the seabed stabilized, the next step is to create the 900-hectare island. This isn't as simple as just dumping sand into the water. First, a massive perimeter wall must be built to enclose the entire area and protect it from the ocean. This sea wall, stretching for kilometers, is an engineering marvel in itself. It's constructed from huge rocks and thousands of giant interlocking concrete blocks called tetrapods. Their special shape is designed to break the power of waves, absorbing their energy and preventing erosion. Once this protective barrier is in place, the process of filling it begins. This involves dredging millions of cubic meters of sand and rock from approved locations and transporting it to the site. The fill material is then mixed with water to create a slurry, which is pumped into the enclosed area until the new land rises above sea level. But this newly placed sand is loose and unstable. 
To make it solid enough to build on, it must be compacted. Engineers use several methods for this, including dynamic compaction, which involves repeatedly dropping a massive weight, weighing many tons, from a crane to pound the ground solid. Another technique is vibroflotation, where a large vibrating poker is driven deep into the sand, shaking the grains into a denser, more compact state. Only after this exhaustive process is the new land ready for construction. On top of this newly created earth, the airport itself will rise. The plan calls for two parallel runways, each an incredible 3,600 meters long, long enough to land the world's largest and heaviest passenger jets, like the Airbus A380. These runways are far more than just strips of asphalt. They are complex, multi-layered structures engineered to handle the immense repeated impact of landing aircraft and designed with sophisticated drainage to manage Bali's intense tropical downpours. But the vision for the North Bali International Airport goes far beyond just runways and terminals. The project includes a 300-hectare Aerocity and a massive 2,800-hectare Aerotropolis. Essentially, a brand new smart city integrated with the airport. This city will feature hotels, logistics hubs, business parks, and even residential areas, all designed to create a new economic center for the North. The entire project is being designed with the Balinese philosophy of Tri Hitta Karana in mind, which emphasizes harmony between people, nature, and the spiritual world. This means incorporating green technologies, using natural ventilation in buildings, and reflecting Bali's unique culture in the architecture but creating a stable island is only half the battle. This new landmass has to survive in one of the most dangerous places on Earth. Indonesia's location makes it one of the most seismically active regions in the world, and for an artificial island built on what was once a soft seabed, an earthquake is the ultimate test. During a powerful earthquake, the reclaimed land faces a terrifying threat, soil liquefaction. This is a phenomenon where the intense shaking causes the water-saturated sand to lose all its strength, temporarily behaving like a liquid. Anything built on top of it could sink, tilt, or collapse. To prevent a catastrophe, the airport's most important structures, the main terminal, the control tower, and the bridges connecting to the mainland, won't actually rest on the reclaimed land. Instead, they will be built on thousands of deep foundations. These are massive steel and concrete piles driven down through the new land, through the layers of soft clay, and anchored deep into the solid bedrock dozens of meters below the seabed. In effect, the airport will be standing on stilts that go all the way through the artificial island, ensuring it remains stable even if the ground around it liquefies. For other areas, engineers will use ground improvement techniques like injecting high-pressure cement grout into the soil to create solid, stable columns that reinforce the land from within. While the engineering is a modern marvel, it comes at a significant environmental price. The very act of building an artificial island can be devastating to the marine ecosystem. Dredging and dumping millions of tons of sand and rock creates vast underwater clouds of sediment. This sediment can drift for kilometers, blocking sunlight and smothering delicate marine habitats, especially coral reefs. North Bali's coastline is home to these vital ecosystems, which are not only beautiful, but also serve as critical breeding grounds for fish, supporting local fishing communities and protecting the coast from erosion. The destruction of these habitats directly threatens the livelihoods of local fishermen, who depend on healthy fish stocks. In other parts of Indonesia, similar coastal reclamation projects have led to sharp declines in fish catches, forcing families who have fished for generations to find new work. The project must undergo a rigorous environmental impact assessment, known as an AMDAL, but concerns have been raised about transparency and whether the proposed measures can truly offset the damage. This creates a difficult paradox. The airport is being built to bring people to see the natural beauty of North Bali, but its construction could damage the very environment that makes the region special. This monumental undertaking is being driven by a $3.09 billion investment, a figure made even more remarkable by the fact that it is fully funded by private investors 
with no money from the Indonesian state budget. The project is a joint venture between a local Indonesian company, PTBIB Yupanji Sakti, and the investor providing the funds, China Construction Group Corporation, a major Chinese state-owned enterprise that will also serve as the main contractor. Proponents promise a massive economic boom, creating over 200,000 jobs during construction and as many as 500,000 once the airport and its surrounding city are operational. However, the project is not without its critics. Bali's former governor publicly questioned the reliability of the funding and warned that without proper supporting infrastructure, like new toll roads and a rail line to connect the airport to the rest of the island, it risks becoming a beautiful but isolated failure. There are also lingering questions about whether the economic benefits will truly flow to the local communities or be captured by outside interests, a common concern with mega-projects of this scale. The North Bali International Airport is more than just an infrastructure project. It's a bet on the future of an entire island. It represents a bold vision to rebalance Bali's economy, create hundreds of thousands of jobs and build a world-class gateway that could redefine Indonesia's place in the region. The engineering required is on the cutting edge of what is humanly possible, a testament to our ability to reshape the very surface of the planet. But it is also a high-stakes gamble with profound environmental and social risks. Is this a visionary leap into a more prosperous future, or is it an engineering and ecological gamble of an unprecedented scale? Only time will tell. What are your thoughts on this incredible project? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into mega engineering, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds, and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next story.